Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver, I'm your host and our topic today is Davis and what is happening in Davis uh, and in particular Fall Fun in Davis. And I have with me Jeff Hudson, he's an arts critic uh, for the Davis Enterprise and for Capital Public Radio. He's also reporting on all the fun things that are happening in Davis. Right. Welcome. It's and good to be here, Lynn. Thank you very much. I appreciate you know how busy you are, so yeah. I appreciate your time being here. So, the school year is upon us, yes, so this, this, let's this, this, talk I, about this, what's this, happening. The, the children who are going back to school may or may not regard it as fun, but it's yeah. definitely happening. <laughs> I know. So. We were sort of a, a little bit ironic yeah, when we yeah, chose yeah, the title. Yeah. Yes. Well, actually, all the educational institutions are getting back into the swing of it. Uh, Sac City College Davis Center gets yes. started on August the 24th. The Davis Public Schools uh, start on August the 28th. The Woodland Schools actually start a week earlier than that. My wife is up working in Woodland today. And then the fall quarter at UC Davis finally gets started in about September the 23rd. Yes. The thing that's going to be on the school district's agenda and also the city council's agenda is the transition to district elections. As, oh, as you tell know, us there, about that. Well, there, there, there's an act called the California Voting Rights Act and the city actually received a letter saying you need to switch to district elections, which sets off the process. The school district decided on their own to switch to district elections back in the spring. Uh, but both the city and the school district are going to be having a bunch of public hearings in September, October, into November, and they're going to be rolling out maps of what these districts will look like. That's a topic for a whole show unto itself, but it's it's yes. it's just it's, a it's, lot it's, of fun too. It's going to it's going to be a very busy time for both those yes. those Can agencies. Can you tell us a little more about this district? Uh, uh, well, currently they both elect city council members or school board members at an at-large basis across the whole city or oh, across yes. the whole school That's district. Right. And yes. they're, they're basically going to be cutting that up into five districts so you'll have people mm -hmm. who are representing specific parts of town. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a complicated legal process. I'm not going to try and sum no, it all no. up. And I don't but it's going to be a big, it's going to be a big transition. And, and it's certainly a, a very interesting yeah. topic that people yeah. will follow. Well, yes. and, and there's going to be lots of opportunities for public comment and Davis being Davis, I'm sure there will be lots of public yes. comment. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of letters to the editor. Right, right, right. Yes. Uh, tell me a little more about the Sac City College. Uh, uh, and uh, it's, isn't it in part partnership with UC Davis? It is, and, yes. and, and they, they coordinate, and the school district is coordinating more with the uh, Sac City College Davis Center as well. Yes. It, it's now possible to complete almost all the requirements that you need for admission into UC Davis at the Davis Center, so you don't have to be making multiple trips across the causeway all the time to pick up the course you would need over at the main Sac City College campus. So it's, it's, a, yes. very, it's a very nice thing for people who are very finishing nice. high school. Very nice, and I've heard about it, and, and uh, this is a way for UC Davis, I believe, uh, to uh, meet some of the uh, challenges that mm -hmm. the students have. Right. And well, and, and then yes. if you if you complete the required grade point average, you're guaranteed admission into UC right. Davis or Sac State. So that it's fabulous. You, know, you, you have to meet the target, though. It's fabulous. Yeah. You, you have to meet the target, but. Uh, um, you know, people who are qualified yeah. will meet well, this, that. Educa education is what we do in Davis, and, yes. and so the, those three educational groups are all kind of putting their heads together and trying to find ways to coordinate a little better. Yes, I'm glad to mm -hmm. hear about that because education is, of right. course, everything. Yeah. Um, then in yes. September, art season gets underway. Ah. And that, that, that is fun. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so tell us more about Well, that. I wanted to start by talking a little bit about Davis Shakespeare. Uh, they did two shows this summer. Yes. But they do their Shakespeare production in the fall. And this is partly because the uh, school groups want to visit. And, of course, school is out of session in summer. So they yes. like to do the Shakespeare show in the fall. And then uh, student groups can come. And they do student matinees. And they pack that theater with lots and well, lots of students. they're very successful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, doing uh, well. I've met uh, one of the uh, uh, artistic product, uh, Gia? Gia, Gia, Gia Batista yes, and, and yes. Rob Salas. Yes. And they're going to be doing in the fall Shakespeare's Comedy of Errors, Great. which, as you and I are probably aware, uh, it's the one with the two sets of identical twins. Yes. Who 
get separated as babies and then all meet up by accident in an exotic place some yes. decades later when they're young adults and then there's a lot of mistaken identity and uh, yes. uh, crazy things happen. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's the closest thing to a farce that Shakespeare ever wrote. I would consider it a farce. And it's very interesting. It's a farce, but at the same time it's also a cyclical archetype. Mm. In, in, uh, yeah. I'm thinking of Daphne de Maurier, the mm. Cape Goat, right. you know, the right. same thing. Right. Now, you, you, your children, your sons are twins, aren't they? Yes, and I used to think... Identical? I, no, they're fraternal, no. but the, the, the first time I saw, before I was a dad, the first time I saw Comedy of Errors, I thought, well, it's kind of a gimmick comedy, and then I realized after I became a father of twins, no, this is social realism all the way. This is very, very <laughs> close to real life. <laughs> and so yeah, people, people getting them confused and stuff like that, so I changed so, my mind. So do they have a permanent tr uh, troupe? Or they have a group of actors that yeah. they've used year after year and some of the ones that you've seen uh, Ian Hops who's been in a bunch of David Shakespeare yes, productions yes. is going to be playing the two Dromeos one who's mm. working for one and the other one's working for the other master yes. and then Gia, Gia Batista is going to be playing, instead of Antiphilus they're calling her Antiphila or both Antiphilas <laughs> and, and, and so you'll have Gia playing both Antiphilas and you'll have Ian playing both Dromeos and so there will be some fast costume changes they're doing it with just a cast of seven it's, it's a very oh, that's amazing. compact yes. cast. Yes, I'm so grateful that they have this yes. uh, oh, Davis they're Shakespeare. And, and they're, they're doing lovely work. They and, do, and, yes. and their attendance with the musical, particularly this summer, was really very good. Yes, I know, I know. And I, I saw one of them... Uh, uh, very, very nice. What else? Well, the we, fun should, parts. We, we, we should talk a little bit about the uh, Mandavi Center season. That gets started on September 29th with a it's basically a gospel and musical theater show mm -hmm. concert uh, with a black choir. Mm -hmm. And uh, Trey McLaughlin and the Sounds of Zamar is the name of the uh, performers. And then on October 4th, uh, singer-songwriter John Prine. You, yes, you, of you, course. Right, yes. right. Um, yes. and, and this is, believe it or not, he's in his 70s. This is his first Mondavi Center appearance. He might have played, might have played at Freeborn Hall back in the day, mm -hmm. but I don't recall ever hearing about that. Uh, I would know. Yeah. Yes. Then the. Uh, what is he playing? Oh, oh, it's, it's, it's his own material. He, oh, he, his he, own he, material. He plays guitar and sings. Yeah. And right. uh, it, would you say that's sort of um, American roots? Right. That's yeah. what I, I I didn't dare. Yeah. No. That that, that would be fun. it. Yes. And then opera fans will want to go to the Barbara K. Jackson Rising Stars of Opera concert, which is on October the fifth. And, and it's a free. And it's free, and the tickets are always grabbed in advance, but if you show up on the day of the performance, you almost always get in yes. because there are always some no-shows. Yes. And this, I understand, is uh, on uh, uh, coincide with uh, the late Barbara Jackson's right. uh, birthday, who's right. a very big donor. Oh, yes, the, yeah, big supporter. Yes. That's why it's Jackson Hall. Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Are you going? Did you take a, get a ticket? Well, I, I, if I you decide wait. to go, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Uh, then uh, there will be a Jimi Hendrix-type concert with a bunch of screaming electric guitarists oh. on October the 13th. <laughs> I think I'll skip that one. Uh, and then, well, it, it, I, the last time they were in town with that tour, uh, the concert ran three hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the, and it was a full house, I right. bet. I, it was, it was. <laughs> It was. And yeah. the Alexander String Quartet comes in on October the 13th with the second year of their Shostakovich String Quartet survey. So the, the first okay. concert will be the seventh and the eighth quartet. And the eighth quartet is the uh, famous one where you can sort of hear the KGB knocking on the door, bum, 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 <laughs> bum, bum, bum. And Shostakovich <laughs> is afraid they've come for him. Uh, now, they've got a bunch of, every year they always have... Uh, big orchestras as part of the Mondavi Center season. Yes. So January the 25th, Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, once again, Pinkus Zuckerman as violinist and uh, conductor. Zuckerman is going to yeah, come today. Right. Oh, he's been here several times now. Oh, okay. uh, he's going to be doing the uh, Brook Violin Concerto and then leading the uh, Brahms First Symphony, October 29th, Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. Yes, Joshua the Bell. Year, I believe. They're going to be touring. You don't often see orchestras tour with the Beethoven Fifth Symphony, but they will be doing it. And, it's and, very good. And, 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 and Joshua Bell is. Well, and, and, and Joshua Bell and the Academy have been doing this whole cycle of Beethoven things, so they're about halfway through recording them now.
Good. Uh, and then he'll play, uh, Bell will play the Paganini Violin Concerto Number no. 1. Yes. And then th this is a big one, March the 7th, San Francisco Symphony. Michael Tilson Thomas will be in his final... The Boston. Uh, no, he's, he's... Oh, he's, he's in San Francisco He's now. in San Francisco, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, but, but he conducted the opening gala at the Mandavi Center back in October of 2002. Yes. And this will be his final appearance at the Mandavi Center as music director of the San Francisco Symphony. So this is kind of like, you know, yes. everything connects. Jeff, um, tell me some of the um, free um, concerts that we have. Well, there's a very good series that happens at the UC Davis Pitzer Center. Yes, the new and it's center. The, 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 yes. the, the Thursday concerts at noon, actually 12.05. And those are very nice concerts. The, the acoustic in that hall, it's a 399 seat hall. And it's, uh, uh, oh, it's a beautiful, it's be beautiful hall. Beautiful hall. It, it's newly uh, built. I mean, it yeah. was built about four right. years ago. Uh, yes. th that starts on and October. And those are recitals. Those are recitals. The, from the, the music department. Mostly the music department. Yeah. Some visiting artists from out of town. Uh, Dajane Smiley starts that series on October the 3rd. Mm -hmm. And then Susan Lamb Cook, the cellist, will be doing a Mozart program on October the 10th. Uh, there's a trio for oboe, clarinet, and bassoon, so woodwind mm -hmm. uh, and of trio, course, the 17th of October. And of course, you can see all this on their website. Right, so they, they, they record yes. all of these, and you can watch them, usually live, and then you can watch them on demand later on. And if you go online, you want to ask for the uh, UC Davis Music Channel on YouTube. Oh, wow. And, and, uh, and Fantastic. you can just listen to them whenever you want. What you're else? Ready. Well, yeah. the, the, this isn't necessarily free, but the Chamber Music Society of Sacramento is going to be starting up on September the 21st. All of their programs this year are going to include at least one piece by a female composer. Uh, this is, this is you know, they're, they're, they're trying to even things up a little bit. So you'll be hearing some music by Libby Larson and by Germaine Tallerfer and some yes. other composers from... Uh, the uh, 20th century and, and yes. uh, 21st century. Libby Larson's still very active out there. Right, right. Uh, and then the- Fantastic scene. Yeah, lots, yes. lots of stuff going on. Yes, and I can then, see from your notes. Uh, oh yeah, I, I make lots of notes. Yeah. Uh, then uh, another good activity, and this would be in the summer or in the fall, is the Minetti Shrem Museum. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, and they have, uh, yes. up through December... It's a hidden jewel. Uh, well, and, and I'm always surprised. There are people who've lived in Davis all along who've never been. Uh, yeah. and, and It's relatively and, new. And, and it's, it's opened in 2016. Really? So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's in its third year yeah. and uh, as of November. Uh, but every time I go there, there are people who drive all the way up from the Bay Area just to see that museum. And if you live in Davis and you've never checked it out, the admission is free. You have to pay a couple bucks for the parking. Uh, I think it's three dollars for two hours of parking. Yes. But uh, it, it's. I think it's fantastic, and it's open. Uh, it is free, as I said. <laughs> And there are some wonderful exhibits. And the exhibits that are there now through uh, December are all by artists who have either lived or studied in Davis yes. or taught in Davis. Yes, and I so saw that exhibit. And so there's a local connection. Very good, yes. The university has this big collection of artwork by these people that they didn't used to get to show very yes. often because they didn't have a nice big gallery. Now they've got a decent sized gallery, so some yeah. of this stuff that you didn't get to see for a long time is actually available on public view. Yes, and of course one of the most... Uh, well known is uh, uh, Thibault, you mm. know, Wayne yeah, Thibault. Wayne, Wayne Thibault yeah. uh, and who has donated a lot of yeah. the, his collection yeah. to Davis. Yeah. And you know, I was, I, I was impressed with Wayne Thibault because I always thought he was the, the cupcake man, mm -hmm. you know, but he actually, some of his earlier works oh, are yeah. fantastic, yeah, you yeah. know, architecturally and perspective. Yeah. So yeah. yes, and also, I think you told me that there is a uh, sort of a, an art room you can go to with the children. Right. And they, 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 and do, they, they do have certain activities there. Uh, and they provide the material right. and you can, uh, you know, splash mm. uh, whatever with paint. Right. And it's and, very and, nice. and I will tell you that that museum is air conditioned. Yes. On, 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 on a hot summer day like the one we're experiencing this very afternoon, yes. uh, indoor museum is a nice thing to do. And don't forget the gong outside. Uh, right. Well, and, and Wiley has some exhibits of other works that are up there now too, so yes. the guy who did the gong. Well, I'm afraid our time is up. 15 minutes go very fast yeah. when it's fascinating. Yeah. And you are a wealth of information. I mean, it's fantastic. And I know you go to 
a lot of these things. So it's, uh, you can really prove that these things are extremely yeah. interesting. Yeah. So thank you so much, Jeff. It's uh, my pleasure Jack to be Hudson here. Hudson of the Davis Enterprise and CAP Radio. And um, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. And uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, you may uh, want to see this program, this show again, um, it, if you go on our website, dctv.davismedia.org. And while you're there, you can check out some of our other uh, programs. We have very interesting topics and outstanding uh, guests. So please do, do so if you have the time. From all of us here at Davis Media, uh, Thank you and see you next time.